fossil fuel backers, Toyota, General Motors, Honda, and even China to some degree, who now have more than 400 hydrogen refueling stations. Well, they're all saying, you know what? The future of transportation is hydrogen. Now, looking at car sales in the United States and worldwide, well, you know what? Buyers disagree. <laughs> hydrogen sales this year have gone down over the last 12 months, have gone down by 70% in America. But hey, maybe that's just because there's not enough hydrogen refueling stations. I mean, in China, for example, there's more than 400. But even in China, funny thing, hydrogen vehicles haven't yet taken off. So what is going on here? Why are these companies, why are they actually trying to push hydrogen fuel? Why do they want you to drive a hydrogen powered vehicle? Well, I think the answer is very clear. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. It's great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. And, you know, it's really disappointing, isn't it? It's like a sickness to see these people, these companies pushing their agenda, pushing their agenda because they want you to be part of their profit system. They want you to be beholden to them. Eventually, uh, most of the world will be renewable, powered by renewable energy. I mean, we're looking at huge decline in the cost of solar, solar panels and huge decline in the costs of energy coming over the next 10 years. California experts are now saying you guys will have a 100% renewable energy grid by 2035. They say the same for Texas, the same is happening in Australia. By 2032, Australia will be pretty much renewables only. That'll mean, right, there will be, there'll be a need for an excess of energy. For that to work, there has to be an excess energy most of the time. That will bring the cost of energy down. As Tony Sieber has predicted many, many times, the cost of energy will be very, very low. It will be at what is called marginal cost, meaning charging your EV will be almost, almost cost you almost nothing, as long as you do it at the right time of day, generally during the night time. But sometimes during the middle of the day as well, when there's a lot of solar. So why is it that then if you can charge your EV for almost nothing, if EVs now we know they, they're lasting, the battery packs are lasting for well over 500,000 kilometers, in some cases 500,000 miles, in general, EV battery packs are now outlasting the life of the car. Why is it that we should all move to hydrogen? I mean, what, how does this actually benefit us? Well, it doesn't. Obviously, it benefits companies like um, oil companies. It benefits Toyota, who have a vested interest in this because they have a, a joint venture partnership with an oil company to sell you hydrogen, set up the hydrogen refueling networks. So that's the biggest reason why they are pushing um, hydrogen, saying it has an advantage over batteries for transport. In fact, they pay for this kind of advertising to try to convince you to, to stick with fossil fuels. It's April 2024, says The Driven. And some of Australia's fossil fuel majors are still touting hydrogen powered vehicles as a, a solution for decarbonizing transport. In fact, you know what, guys? This is, I see these comments all the time. On Facebook, people have been brainwashed by hydrogen. I don't know why, because whenever you try and get in a discussion with them, try and discuss the, met, the, the actual merits of it, you compare electrification versus hydrogen, they don't want to, they're not interested. They shut down. It's like, no, 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 this is my religion. You cannot argue against my religion. And I think that's true. I mean, when you try and argue with someone who believes in a certain religion, you're never going to win that argument. I mean, they're going to stick their heels in it's not going to work. And the same applies to hydrogen. Now, I don't think that stands up to the test of logic. In my opinion, logic is key here. You should be able to, you know, get into a discussion with someone, have it what you might think is an argument, but look at it in terms of objective reasoning. But people now who are fans of hydrogen, they fail to do that now. Once you really start getting into that, they just shut down. That really tells you something, I think. In an article published this week, the ABC in Australia says the Driven quoted Dr. Stephen Percy, a senior research fellow at the Victorian Hydrogen Hub, who says green hydrogen has the potential to decarbonize transport. It's particularly promising for road freight where hydrogen has an advantage over batteries and fossil fuels, said Dr. Perry. Now, what's the advantage? Does it really have an advantage? Well, Today, no. First of all, there's no such thing as green hydrogen. Only a tiny percentage of global hydrogen is actually green. The vast majority of it is created by burning fossil fuels. Uh, in the future, will it be? Sure. But I mean, in the future, all energy will be green. The article by ABC journalist Jessica Black was accompanied by social media 
um, on Instagram saying that the claim that hydrogen has an advantage over batteries showing a H2 graphic alongside it. Yeah, anyway, basically this is them saying why hydrogen is the answer. Operating a battery electric truck on a route that is possible, but it's going to require numerous hours of charging time. Whereas with hydrogen, you can refuel those vehicles about as quickly as a diesel truck, said Percy. Now, first of all, guys, uh, trucks are not run this way. You can't simply keep driving a truck just because it's able to, you're able to refuel it quickly. You can't just drive it. It's not legal in any country in the world. It's not. <laughs> maybe in a few African countries or like Southeast Asian countries, they don't have any regulations. Maybe, I don't know. I, I'm not saying that's the case, but you can't in America or Europe and Australia just drive forever. It's not legal. You have to stop. You have to pull over. And in the time it takes you to stop with one megawatt charging, or even in some cases now 1.5 megawatt fast charging, you can charge a battery in a truck very, very quickly. But keep in mind, there's also a lot of battery electric trucks that have battery swapping, where basically um, a machine removes the battery pack and puts a new one in, which takes about, about three to five minutes. That said though, we're now seeing electric trucks with longer and longer ranges. And as we see an improvement in energy density in electric trucks, well, it's meaning that companies like MAN, or well, the biggest trucking companies in the world are now saying, uh, yeah, we admit that electric is actually the future of trucking. Even they don't agree that hydrogen is the answer for long haul trucking. The Victorian Hydrogen Hub in collaboration with oil and gas companies is, well, trying to promote its own. That makes sense, really, I guess. According to its website, the Victorian Hydrogen Hub is a partnership between CSIRO and Germany's Arena 2036, whatever that is. The Victorian Hydrogen Hub brings together researchers, industry partners, and business to drive the implementation of the hydrogen economy, says the website. Um, if you scroll down the page, says the Driven, I'm looking at their article here, you'll see petrol and diesel distributor Ampol, which is a big fossil fuel company, as well as the Australian car gas infrastructure group are listed as part of this whole deal, right? Basically just a bunch of fossil fuel companies trying to sell you more fossil fuels. So this is just marketing. I don't know why anyone actually buys into this, but people do. The Driven spoke to the Victorian Hydrogen Hub to seek clarification on their research to find out if, you know, what they're saying is has any objective reasoning behind it or if it's just pure marketing. VHH Chief Scientist Professor Virginia Kilbourne confirmed that in addition to funding from the Victorian government's Higher Education State Investment Fund, VHH also receives funding from, um, yeah, um, one of the biggest fossil fuel companies in Australia called Ampol. The Driven asked VHH about the research behind Dr. Percy's claim that hydrogen has an advantage over battery electric transport. Dr. Percy wasn't interested in commenting. Interesting. However, they did say this, there is no real world Australian field trials and that's an issue. From a modeling perspective, when we look at some of the charging refueling times, there could be some advantage in terms of operationally. So that's all they had to say really. Now, someone has come back here, an engineer, and said, to be fair, we need to have both technologies against each other in real work conditions and test for this, but both range and charging, refueling time are factors that will influence the comparative advantage of these technologies. Now, the truth is here, battery electric trucks, for example, Tesla Semi has around 500 miles of real world range. How often do you need to travel further than that, right? How often do you need to travel even that distance? But even for long haul trucking, you still need to stop. So you're gonna to need to stop, pull over, and the driver has to rest, because you can only drive for four hours at a time in most countries, and then you have gotta rest for an hour, and then you can drive again. But there needs to be a minimum amount of rest. And that rest time, that's when you can charge. And with one megawatt charging speeds and more than 500 miles of range, well, yeah. I mean, that's the key reason why most trucking companies even admit the future of long haul trucking is electric and not powered by hydrogen. Now, that's, that aside, honestly, I don't really even care personally. I couldn't care less if long haul trucking did go towards hydrogen. I mean, so what? What does, it, what does it matter? Well, here's the thing. It matters because we've got really invested parties selling you a story on why it's better. And they are fossil fuel companies. And they're brainwashing people to make them believe 
in the mythical amazingness of hydrogen. They don't look at the downsides. There's a lot of downsides. One, it's incredibly expensive. I mean, it costs about literally 10 times more than gasoline or diesel, petrol or diesel. It's insanely prohibitively expensive. Could that change in the future? Maybe, maybe not. Two, how long do these hydrogen engines last for or hydrogen powered fuel cell trucks? How long do they last for? No one really knows. We don't have a lot of evidence yet. We do know that there's a lot of Teslas getting around that have done more than 500 miles of range on the same battery pack. That's amazing. We know there's a lot of electric trucks now that have lasted for hundreds of miles without needing to be any, have any major servicing. It's a huge cost advantage. We know what the cost of electricity is. But hydrogen, it's a big unknown. And the reality is, hydrogen is incredibly expensive. And for that reason, I think it's unlikely to ever take off. But hey, I could be wrong. If you're a big fan of hydrogen, if you've drunk the Kool-Aid, or if not, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.